This series of videos is provided to educate you to convert a 3D model into a No Man's Sky usable ship scene and to implement said ship into the game via the Ships of More workflow. If you wish to view the previous part, please click the card appearing on the top right to navigate to the video. In this part, we will cover the process to add functional components of a No Man's Sky ship in Blender using the NMSDK plugin. To enable it for use in No Man's Sky as a ship, various critical components must be included to make it functional. In this section, we will create a No Man's Sky scene instance for export, create collision meshes for the model, add different scene nodes for in-game ship functions, and export the ship as a No Man's Sky geometry and scene. To create a No Man's Sky scene instance in Blender, navigate to the top left portion of the viewport, select the Add menu, and click Create Empty NMSDK Scene. This will create a new object in the outliner named NMS underscore scene. This is the scene instance that will be used for exporting. Select the object in outliner, select the Object Properties tab in the Properties panel, and navigate to the NMS Reference Properties field. The Scene Name field is where you will name your scene. It will be used as the name of a scene file and a geometry file. For this example, we will name it Winda underscore Borderland. Next, click and hold all mesh objects in the outliner and put them under NMS Scene as the children of a scene instance. Any children of the NMS scene object will be exported unless it is set as a none type in the NMS node properties field in object properties. A scene requires collision meshes in order for it to have collision physics in game. Therefore, we will need to create collision meshes for the model. There are two types of collision meshes, mesh collision and primitive collisions. There are four subtypes of primitive collisions, cube, sphere, cylinder, and capsules. We will make use of a combination of mesh and primitive collisions to construct a detailed, comprehensive collision mesh for the model. First, select NMS scene in the outliner and create a locator node as a child object by right-clicking in the viewport Selecting Add New Scene Node Objects in the Context menu and selecting Locator Node. We will use this locator as a parent to all collision meshes for better organization. We will name this locator Collisions. To learn about the No Man's Sky Scene Node system and the role of locators, please refer to the Scene Files page on the Step Modification Guide. In the previous section, we have made a copy of the model. We will now use this model to create a mesh collision. Move this copy to be a child of the collision's locator object in the outliner. Select the Object Properties tab in the Properties panel and navigate to the NMS Node Properties field. Select Collision and under NMS Collision Properties, select Mesh and Transform. This will set the object as a mesh type collision node. While mesh collision can be versatile, it also has its limitations. High tri count collisions can decrease performance. Small faces in the mesh collision can cause crashes. Hand modeling the mesh can be time consuming. To accelerate the process, we will make use of another modifier. Navigate to the modifier tab in the Properties panel and add a Remesh modifier. Select the Sharp mode and tweak the parameters until the mesh matches the rough shape of the model. You are recommended to keep the try count of the mesh under 500. You can use the Arctree Dev parameter to coarsely adjust the detail and try count and the Scale parameter for fine tuning. If your model is symmetrical, you can also add the mirror modifier to make sure the mesh is symmetrical as well. 
When you are satisfied, apply the modifiers from top to bottom. Triangulate the mesh afterwards. You can now further tweak the mesh in edit mode if you want. After creating the mesh collision, there may be parts of the model not covered by the mesh. We will utilize the primitive type collisions to complete this process. Select the collisions object in the outliner, right click in the field port, select add new scene node objects in the context menu, and select any one of the collision nodes. We will first add a box collision node. In the field port, move, scale, and orient the cube to cover the parts not covered by the mesh collision. Realize that scaling these primitive collisions on their local axes will provide the most accurate result, as NMSDK rely on the scale values in the object properties in export, and the skewing of these collisions in Blender will not translate to skewed collisions in game. The same principles applies to sphere, cylinder, and capsule collisions. However, primitive collisions do not have a size limit they can be as small as the user defines them as. As a result, if your mesh type collision causes the game to crash, realize that you can always fall back to using primitive collisions. Collision meshes alone do not make a model functional as a ship. Various other components will be added in the following procedures, including cockpit pose and interact locators, contrail and trail locators, EXT shoot locators, and optional model references for extra functionalities. To add a locator node, once again select NMS scene in the outliner and right click in the field port. Select add new scene node objects in the context menu and select locator node. Rename the locator cockpit post in the exact capitalization shown here. This locator acts as the position of the first-person cockpit. It also facilitates the scaling of the individual ship inversely, which can be a great help if you wish to quickly scale it after it is exported. For example, if you wish to scale the ship down roughly 50%, you can modify the scale X, scale Y, and scale Z parameters of the cockpit post scene node to 2. Move the locator to your desired position. Add another locator node. Rename this locator INTERACT in all caps. This locator defines the position of the interaction prop in game. Move the locator. You are recommended to position it to the rough center of the model. Trail and contrail locators defines origins of the ship trail, visible at all times, and the ship contrails visible during planetary flight. Add a new locator node, rename the locator trail, followed by a numeric suffix such as trail1. Move the locator to your desired position. Trail origins are usually positioned at the end of engines. Add another locator node, rename it contrail, followed by a numeric suffix. Once again, Move the locator to your desired position. Contrail origins are usually located at the back tips of wings. After that, set the rotation mode to XYZ Euler in the Object Properties tab and set the Y rotational value to 180 so that the contrail will face backwards in game. You can create multiple trail and contrail locators to enhance its visuals. We will also need to define the origins of projectiles shot by the ship. Again, add a locator node, rename the locator EXT underscore SHOOT in all caps, followed by a numeric suffix, and move the locator to your desired location, such as the end of a gun barrel. You can add a maximum of three EXT SHOOT locators. Besides these vanilla components, Ships of More also uses a custom engine flame scene to further enhance the visual experience. This is an optional component. 
If you wish to skip over it, fast forward to the next section. To acquire the engine flame scene, download the Ships of More main file from Nexus Mods. Unpack the mod and copy the contents of models slash common slash spacecraft slash S class slash royal parts slash engine to your vanilla unpack counterpart. After that, you can import the scene by selecting File or the menu bar, selecting Import, selecting Import NMS Scene. Navigating to the folder within the vanilla unpack and selecting Engine Boost New .bin. You need to uncheck the Clear Scene option to avoid NMS DK from clearing out your project before importing the scene. After the import is complete, move and scale the engine flame to your desired position. The engine flame is usually positioned to protrude out of the engines. Due to a bug in NMS DK version 0.9.24, you will also need to redefine the reference path field under NMS Reference Properties. In the Object Properties tab, for this engine flame, rename it to Models slash Common slash Spacecraft slash S Class slash Royal Parts slash Engine slash Engine Boost New dot scene dot mbin. Matching its directory and file name. You can add multiple engine flames to enhance its visuals. The model is now ready for export. First, select the NMS scene object, navigate to NMS reference properties, and copy the scene name. Select File on the menu bar, select Export, and select Export to NMS XML format. Choose the root directory at which you want the folder to be located. Paste the scene name onto the field at the bottom of the pop-up window. This will set the name of the folder your files will directly be under. At the top right corner, name the directory in which you want the scene to be located. This will also define the file path allocation in all of the exported MBIN files, so you should not modify the folder structure after export. We have named the directory as custom models slash window so that the exported model files will be located in custom models slash window slash window borderland. Check the Don't Export Vertex Colors option as we do not need vertex colors for the model. After that, click the Export to NMS XML Format button at the bottom right. Wait for Blender to export the file. After the file is exported, you should see the notification Models exported successfully at the bottom of the Blender window. Congratulations! You have now successfully exported the model into the No Man's Sky MBIN format. In the next part, we will cover the conversion process outside of Blender and the final touches of adding the model into a spaceship spawn pool. If you are interested, please subscribe to this channel. Until next time.